بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد Amongst the many logical proofs of the truthful nature of Islam is that there is absolute consistency between the tenets of Islam and the anatomy of the humankind. So when you look at the laws of the Almighty, the legislation, the commands, the injunctions, and you study the makeup, the composition of the humankind, you will find that every command of the Almighty is in perfect synchronization with the human temperament. There is no inconsistency, disparity, or dichotomy between the human nature and the commands of the Almighty. And if perchance you find this command or that particular injunction strange or peculiar or unusual, then that is due to external influence which has obscured your lenses. The Dean and the human makeup because the very Allah who created you legislated Islam Islam is the natural way it's the natural way وَمُحَمَّدُ بْنُ الْمُثَنَّةِ وَمُحَمَّدُ بْنُ بَشَّارِ بْنِ عُثْمَانِ وَاللَّفْزُ لِأَبِي غَسَّانِ وَابْنِ الْمُثَنَّةِ قال حدثني معاذ بن هشام عن أبي عن قتادة عن مطرف بن عبد الله بن شخير عن عياض بن حمار المجاشعي رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال I give you the chain of narration it appears in Sahih Muslim باب صفة أهل الجنة in that portion of the hadith, وَإِنِّي خَلَقْتُ عِبَادِي حُنَفَا Allah says, I created all my servants, حُنَفَا مُسْتَعِدِّينَ لِقُبُولِ الْحَقِّ With the natural talent and ability to obey me. So that's the first point we need to understand. Our makeup and the teachings of Islam is perfect. Today science will tell you fasting, it's so good, it's so beneficial. When you starve the body, the body is healing. They will tell you when you rise early, it's so beneficial. When you put water on your nape, it gives you this benefit and all those other scientific data and info that you are acquiring now. Islamically, we know that every command of the Almighty is in perfect synchronization with um, the human anatomy. The beauty of Islam is, and listen to me, my brother and my sister, listener and viewer, and this is my final address for this particular trip. May Allah bless you all. And I pray that our interaction is uh, meaningful and it leaves us both more spiritually energized, inshallah, as we move forward in this blessed, sacred, and momentous month of Ramadan. The, the thing is that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, وَإِنِّي خَلَقْتُ عِبَادِي حُنَفَا That Allah says, I've created my servants with the natural ability of embracing truth. So now, if there is external influence, like I said, then it creates this blockage and it obscures our views. But if you keep a person in his natural and pure environment, that is why when a person comes into Islam, we say he reverted to Islam, meaning he was there before. He was there before. So the beauty of Islam is that Allah has opened up many avenues to reach him. This is the user-friendly nature of Islam. So of course, your belief system has to be in order. That's key and core. But coupled with that, every person who will go to Jannah, may Allah make us amongst them, Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen, will enter through the mercy of Allah. However, 
every dweller of paradise will have a different action which will attract the mercy of Allah. And that's again the beauty of Islam because each one of us are designed very differently. Some people can read a lot of Quran. Other people are very selfless in terms of generosity. They can spend a lot. Other people are those that can serve. Some can smile. And Islam is this beautiful religion that it made every one of the above qualities a source for entry into Jannah. How often don't you board a flight and uh, you occupy the same seat in terms of comfort, perks and privileges of the person sitting next to you because it's the same cabin, be it economy, business or first class. So what you paid for it, oh, I booked last minute and it was really expensive. It cost me an arm and a leg, if not few legs. You, I was very lucky. My brother works for the airline. I was on standby. I paid 25%. I hopped on late, 25% and done. How about you? I had my miles were about to expire. I did a redemption ticket. You, you won't believe I got bumped up from economy to business class because being patriotic to the airline. So 20 people in the same cabin, but everybody has a different story pertaining to his fare. Wallah, thumma wallah, all those that will enter into Jannah, may Allah make us amongst them. Because the reality is we don't know, my brother. The reality is we, we are in the examination room and may Allah protect us. We cannot be proud or haughty or arrogant. The arrogance on piety is worse than the arrogance on wealth. Somebody said, I consider everybody better than me. Because I assume you're a sinner. Why do I assume you're a sinner? Because you're a mortal, you're a human, and no human is free from sin. So I don't know what you're sinning, but you're a human. I mean, if I see a couple walking together, I, I'm going to say, mashallah, they look happy. But of course they have their arguments. I, I'll be foolish to say, no, 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 look at them, they're smiling, they're cheerful whenever I see them. No, they are couples and they're married, so they will be having their, you know, fair amount of differences. I assume you sin, and I know I sin. I know, it's not an assumption. I know myself. So that's why I consider everyone better, because the reality, I know myself. So we ask Allah to make us amongst them. But every person who will be in Jannah, Brother, what did you do? Oh, you know what? Allah just loved the way I served my mother and he forgave me. Brother, what did you do? There was a dog in the neighborhood that was hungry, roaming the streets. And I couldn't see this here. Was it not Hassan radiallahu anhu who seen Abban bin Uthman? And he seen this man sitting in the orchard. And then uh, he's eating and he's feeding. He's eating and he's feeding the dog. Until there was a slice of bread left. Shatarah ar raghif He then split the slice of bread in half and he gave half to the dog and he ate half. So Hassan radiallahu anhu came and he asked this man, Ma hamalaka ala an shatart al kalb? What inspired you to cut your last slice of bread in half and give half to the dog and half to yourself? He said, Istahat aynaya min aynayhi an ugabinahu. I couldn't look a hungry dog in its eyes and eat up a slice of bread knowing this animal is hungry. And Hassan radiallahu anhu says, don't leave. tu alayka la barikh, don't leave. And then he goes to the master of that slave and he purchases the orchard with the slave. And then he comes back to that slave and he says that I have now purchased you over. So he said, Obedience to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and please tell me now that you are the new owner of this place. He said, I'm happy to inform you that I have liberated you for the pleasure of Allah. And furthermore, this orchard is now a gift for you. And Abban bin Uthman turns around you have gifted it for me, gifted it to me in the name of Allah, and I gifted it in the name of that very Allah for whom you gifted it to me. 
Can you imagine? Like every one of that era was so amazing. Everyone was so conscious. Everyone was so selfless. So one person will be in Jannah. Why? I fed a dog. You, Allah, Allah was pleased with me because I was kind to my neighbor. What about you, brother? Allah accepted from me that there was an old man crossing the road. I alighted my vehicle, took his parcel, and I was gentle with him. This is the beauty of Islam, that Allah has opened up the doors of reaching him so vast and wide. Of course, the qualifying statement is that your aqidah and your beliefs need to be correct. Your aqidah and your beliefs need to be correct. There's no compromise on beliefs. Let's be clear. I don't want to mince my words. But then every person will have a different action, which will be the catalyst to expedite his... Because the reality is in the end, it will just be an excuse. It's an excuse. You know, when a child is going to kindergarten or pre-nursery or early... And then, uh, oh, they're having a graduation ceremony. And, and, oh, the parents are coming and the grandparents are coming. And, wow, wow, that's so amazing. Oh, you're so sweet and so adorable. Oh, that's so beautiful. I'm going to frame it. And what was it? Just learn how to scribble. Just learn how to scribble. That's it. Ah. Oh. That's so sweet. Show Nana, show your dad, show auntie. Oh my word. My brother, you and I are scribbling. The Sahaba were those that wrote. They were those that wrote. Every day at Iftar, my creator is my witness. My prayer is, oh my Lord, if you don't punish me for this sin, that alone is your, for this fast, that alone is your kindness. I have presented to you a fast that is maimed, that is injured, that is bruised, that is lame, that is lethargic, that is incapacitated, that has been compromised on so many fronts. Oh my Lord, if you don't punish me, that alone is your kindness. And if you reward me, I have no words to describe my, great, my, my gratitude to you, O oh Allah. So, the logical proof of the veracity of Islam is that it ties up perfectly. How many a reverts when it came to Islam? They will tell you, hey, this thing just makes perfect sense, man. I had so many areas of concern before I accepted Islam. This thing just fits on like a glove onto the hand. Now this whole picture is in order. This thing makes total sense. And the beauty of Islam is that Allah's, Allah's given everybody, everybody's wired differently. Whatever Allah has given you, tap into it, drive with it, run with it. You love to serve the creation, serve them passionately and diligently and pray to your Lord that will get you through. You're a man who can recite Quran, do it passionately, do it actively. You're a person that can take care of the neighborhood, mobilize, help, care, take care, do whatever you can. That's the beauty of our religion, that the doors to paradise are so many. I had once led a funeral prayer, and then I spoke of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam in which he وسلم, said if 40 people will pray at the funeral of a deceased and make dua for forgiveness Allah will accept the intercession so a brother walks up to me and he has tattoos and he's studded and he's got a cap on and he's got this colorful top on and he's like hey imam did I hear you right I said yeah well, what do you want me to repeat did you say the Prophet of Allah said, if 40 people will come and pray at my funeral, Allah will forgive me? I said, indeed. So if I speak to 40 of my buddies and I tell them when I kick the bucket, you must be there, will Allah forgive me? I said, indeed. Give people hope. We're not advocating that you must become negligent and oblivious and careless and heedless. But we are telling you that the doors of mercy are vast. 
a particular narration can be weak but the mercy of Allah is strong the mercy of Allah is strong the mercy of Allah is vast the devil plays two tricks number one he gets you to commit the sin number two he makes you despondent and let me assure you his latter attack is more intense than the former if he if you've succumbed to his provocation don't give him the latter pleasure of despondency so first he comes and tells you do the wrong and we unfortunately humans we mortals fallibility, fallibility is part of our nature don't give him the latter pleasure don't give him that pleasure of despondency keep your hope with your creator Allah is forgiving put your trust put your reliance okay so I want to mention just as a build up from there to focus on one point quickly that was just a preamble so uh, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu says I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayyul a'mali afdal which action is most beloved to Allah so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said iman on Allah and striving in his path then I asked the second question the hadith appears in both Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim uh, the liberation of which slave is the best so the messenger وسلم, said the slave that is the most expensive most valuable in the eyes of its owner if you liberate that because that has great value back in the days of course then that will earn you great reward the scholars say in today's time of course you cannot have that and you will see study Islam today people want to taint Islam with slavery no 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 if you study Islam sincerely honestly candidly in the search of truth I have no doubt Islam will permeate your heart why because it's the declaration of the Quran that Allah guides whomsoever he wishes that's one category that's his prerogative whoever I want to guide I guide that's my choice so he can guide whomsoever he wishes that's his right that's his prerogative but his justice is that whoever seeks it I never deny it Allah Allah says I select that's my choice you have 10 applicants it's at the discretion of the person selecting the ambassador can decide to approve your visa or decline uh, the manager can decide to give you the job or not Allah people have no mask no entry and everybody is adapted to the new norm and then you still want to question no iman no entry into Jannah policy no but isn't this exclusive you have a no mask no entry policy and you deny access and it's your right and you exercise it and then you want to question the authority of Allah that no iman no entry into Jannah So, whoever will seek it sincerely, Allah will guide you. Islam came and promoted the liberation of slaves. Islam made an atonement and an expiation for an offense, the liberation of sin, uh, the liberation of slaves. Islam came to take people out of the bond of slavery. And honestly, in becoming the slave of Allah is true freedom and if you're not the slave of Allah then you are a slave to your ego and that's the worst master you can ever have I know of people who have reverted to Islam with the grace of Allah because they were tired of a life of indulgence they were tired it's just too much of indulgence eat when you like drink as much as you want sleep wherever you want indulge wherever you want there's just no boundaries no limitations life becomes so boring I was saying to someone in a casual discussion today 
we all are out in the pursuit of happiness, right? Everybody wants, you buy a car to be happy, I buy a house to be happy, you go on a holiday to be happy, you buy branded clothing, you have fine dining, but what we all want to be happy, we want to feel good. Outside Ramadan, we have three nice, healthy, lavish meals, and we're not excited for any meal. Come the month of Ramadan, we adjust our body to moderate deprivation, and suddenly from the child to the adult, everybody for 30 days is happy on the iftar table. So what's the formula to happiness? Deprive this ego that's hankering relentlessly. The more you curb it, and then you give it a little bit, it will be excited. And the more you succumb to it unending, the more miserable you are. Suddenly at the iftar for 30 days, everybody's excited. It might not be long-lived, short-lived, but there is a sense of excitement. Other than that, every day, neither, there's a moan breakfast, there's a groan at lunch, there's an objection at dinner, nobody's happy. Okay, coming back to the hadith. Which slave is the best? The Messenger وسلم, said the one that is most expensive. Then uh, the companion Abu Dhar radiallahu narrates, he said, he asked the Prophet وسلم, Araita in du'aftu an ba'dil amal. O Messenger sallallahu wasallam, if I am unable to do this. So he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Tu'inu sani'an aw tasna'u li akhraq. La ilaha. That this is the beauty of Islam. You know what's another way to go to Jannah? If you see somebody doing some work, the man is painting his house, or the person is loading something into his trunk, or a person is stranded on the road and he's changing his tire, he had a puncture, or a person is carrying, you know what, he's got a stroller, he's got a child, he's got a bag, he's got few things, tu'inu sani, and somebody doing some craft, some skill, help him, or tasna'u li or aid someone who's not skilled, he doesn't know, you're at an airport, the person doesn't know how to fill in a form, Wait, wait, brother, come, I will help you out to do it here. Or the man now, because everything's touchless, he doesn't know how to scan his body. Wait, brother, I will help you. Let me tell you. Help someone do it, what they know or they don't know, and Allah will give you Jannah. Um, th this is the beauty of our faith. This is the beauty. And that's why I said this is the natural way. Islam is not exclusively kept to the places of worship. The one whom we've given life to, we've revived him. And we've given him a light. Islam is a light. What is the light? The definition of light is which is bright by itself and it illuminates the place where you go. Now Allah says, Yam shi bihi fin nas. He takes this light and he walks with it wherever he goes. I share this as a reflection and not to trumpet myself, but as an uh, example and motivation. I was in India and uh, I boarded a train from Gujarat to Mumbai. And I boarded the train and I was coming from, I think it was Paris, and then I came into Dubai and from there to India. And I, was, I had a few country tours and some lecture programs, etc. Anyway, I boarded the, the train in, in Gujarat. And uh, if you know, these trains are quite full and you know, there's an influx of people, etc., quite a bit. And as routine, I phone my parents all the time. And I'm in the house of Allah. And I just update them and I, I tell my mom I'm here, I gave a talk here, I request her prayers and people know it, I've said it in many of my talks, that's what inspires me and that's the fuel that keeps me going and it's the prayers of our parents and that's what you need, we all need that, without that it's just, it's emptiness, it's emptiness, it's just emptiness, it's words. But if it's coupled with prayers and du'as, then suddenly the mileage out of that vehicle is different, it's different. What's the definition of baraka? Maximum outreach with minimum provisions. The multiplication from one to two and two to three, that's common mass. That's not barakah. It might have an angle of barakah. But barakah is defined minimum provision, maximum benefit. Almost something that defies logic. 
almost something that defines well, logically this thing doesn't yeah well that's why they call it barakat that's why they call it barakat anyway so i sat down and i phoned my mom and i i say this and i encourage you allah knows i call my mom my darling my angel my baby my sweetheart i kiss her feet till today i kiss my dad's feet like literally because that is that is the teachings of our deen so i said my darling my love my angel my sweetheart how are you mama I love you my darling yeah i'm well i had a program my health is good and a mother's values are the same did you eat did you sleep you can be any of any age that's the value of a parent you 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 can be your own you can be a grandparent but did you eat did you sleep and anyway i i completed my talk uh, my my discussion with my mom and i put the phone down so i'm sitting here there is this other brother from mumbai hafiz asif and there is a non muslim hindu brother sitting on the other side in the train so he nudges this man that's between the two of us which is my friend from mumbai he says who's this man here so they talk in hindi he says no this is my priest he's my uh, religious leader he says you know i boarded this train late and i had to pay an expensive amount because i boarded it quite late and obviously i was taxed double and i was in so much anger and rage but i am now so grateful that i paid last minute and i got a seat here in my life i've never heard a man talk to his mother with so much respect like this man allah is my witness i'm not there to trumpet myself it made me conscious waj'alna lahu nuran yamshi bihi fi nas allah has made us a light the non muslim is not reading quran and hadith he's reading you be a good reflection for the entire duration of that train this brother goes on to youtube and listens to my lectures from gujarat to mumbai while i'm sleeping what reflection are we how are we presenting our deen just the manner in which we talk we are courteous we are polite we are gentle we are you know have some basic mannerism okay so o oh prophet of allah if i cannot do this what did the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam say tu'inu sani'an aw tasna'u li akhraq somebody is stranded just just help him just carry the load for him just do it for him and move on move on Now listen to this, and that's the point I actually wanted to lay. But look at how much time has lapsed. I apologize for that. Uh, oh, Prophet of Allah, if I'm unable to do this, listen to this, my brother. We have no choice to blame anyone but ourselves. The kufu sharaka anin nas, fa inna ha sadaqatun min ka ala nafsik. Okay, okay, okay. If you cannot liberate slaves and you cannot empower people. and you cannot help someone that is not skilled and you cannot and you cannot then you know what oh my companion just restrain yourself from harming anybody that is also charity and that will also get you into jannah if you cannot give positive energy just don't give negative that's also will earn your jannah the kuffu restrain sharaka your evil anin nas from people فانها صدقه منك على نفسك the hadith of bukhari and muslim this is charity hafiz ibn hajar writes we learn from this ان الكف من الشر داخل في فعل الانسان وكسبه حتى يؤجر عليه ويعاقب غير ان الثواب لا يحصل مع الكف الا مع لا يحصل بالكف illa ma'an niyyati wal qasdi la ma'al ghaflati was sahwi wow he writes that we learn from this hadith that abstinence from harming also constitutes an act of reward that means staying clear of inflicting is an act of reward however the qualifying statement and academic write up is 
that abstaining from inflicting harm will only constitute an act of reward if you consciously, intentionally embark on it. By way of example, you just come to the masjid and you park anywhere. You parked into a parking bay and that's it. There is no credit for that, there's no liability. Then you came and you said, hey, let me park here, it's easy access. Then you said, no, 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 no. This is a walkway, this is a pathway. As much as I can park here, but potentially I could obstruct someone. There is a wheelchair access here. It will become difficult for someone with a wheelchair. No, no, let me go round the block and park there and make it easy that if anybody needs to access this here, then it will be easy access for him. All you did were you were conscious and considerate and you were sensitive to others and you parked at the place where you did not cause harm to anyone. You are in reward. You can walk out from the masjid. Let me pray behind the pillar. So somebody crossing, it's easy for him. I don't make it difficult for him. Where you start holding back your evil, you don't cause any pain to anyone. This is an act of reward. This is an act. And that's my message, my brother, that Islam is so beautiful, so user friendly, that we need to do the basic and the elementary and the fundamentals. Our beliefs need to be in order. And then every one of us has our own calling. We have our own passions. Allah has designed us differently. And the passion of every person is unique. Tap into the passion which Allah gave you because that's how he designed you. And ask Allah to accept that and that will get you into Jannah. And if you find in a vacuum and a void and there's no passion, then just have this passion. I don't want to hurt people. If I cannot compliment, I don't want to condemn. If I cannot help, I don't want to hurt. Go with that passion that is an act of reward. I'll leave you with a quick reflection in this regard. Allah says the adulterer and the adulteress, when they have repented, فَإِن تَابَ وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَا If they have repented, then move on. فِيهِ عَدَمُ التَّثْرِيبِ عَلَى التَّائِبِ فَإِنَّهُ إِذَاءٌ بِلَا ضَرُورًا بَلْ قَدْ يَكُونُ فِيهِ فَتْحُ بَابِ الشَّرِّ عَلَيْهِ That somebody who's repented, don't taunt him. Don't say nasty things about him. Don't say condescending, oh, but you did this, oh, but you like this, oh, but your past is like this. No, no, no. You are causing pain to someone. You are harming someone. You are offending someone. You are hurting the feelings of someone. Become conscious. If you cannot actively engage in virtue, then just abstinence from wrong will also earn you Jannah. They say there are two types of people. Some are those that bring happiness wherever they go. And others are those that bring happiness whenever they go. There are two types of people. Some bring happiness wherever they go. They come here, they make people happy. They go home, they make people happy. They go to a function, they make people happy. And others, whenever they go, oh, good riddance, man. May Allah make us from amongst the former and not the latter. I take this opportunity to thank the Al-Quds, uh, committee and community and the brothers and sisters it's been a lovely four days in this blessed month of ramadan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your efforts and may allah grant us the ability to maximize in the days ahead inshallah and we hope that the little interaction that we shared is a source of goodness stimulation and a spiritual injection rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وزد وتحنن وترحم على حبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين O oh, most kind, most gracious, most merciful Allah We ask you to give us the ability to maximize on every act of virtue, O oh Allah Thereby seeking your rahmah and your mercy, O oh Allah O oh Allah, we ask you to make us amongst those people Whose entry into paradise is announced and declared in this blessed month of Ramadan O oh Allah, we ask you to give us the ability to abandon a life of sin, vice, and transaction. Allah, we ask you to make us ambassadors of good. 
make us keys to virtue and a lock to evil, O oh Allah. Make us amongst those who can cheer people, brighten people, and never lower the spirits or, or uh, demoralize people, O oh Allah. Allah, many of our near and dear ones have passed away in the recent past and in the distant past. We ask you to envelope them in your mercy, O oh Allah. Many of our near and dear ones are unwell and sick, O oh Allah, some at home and some in medical facilities. We ask you to grant cure to all, Allah. Allah, with the pandemic, it has seen an economic meltdown, and many have been laid off their source of income. We ask you to provide everyone with pure, halal, wholesome sustenance, O oh Allah. We ask from you all the good that Muhammad has asked from you, and we ask thy divine protection against all the evils and the vices from which Muhammad has has asked protection. Allahumma tawaffana wa anta radin anna ghayra ghadban. Allahumma tawaffana wa anta radin anna ghayra ghadban. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.